Today robots can do almost everything humans can. But can they emote or feel? In this essay, I'm going to explore the idea of robots having emotions through several emotional theories and empirical examples. The future where robots can be our friends, lovers, or even the lords of men has long been a favorite subject of sci-fi movies and fictional characters. Each of us probably still remembers the film I, Robot, which only a decade ago offered an exciting, though fantastic look at the future, in which robots not only have human traits, habits and skills, but also can feel and communicate adequately with their creators' humans. Another example is the movie Lowe. It's hard to believe that the adorable little garbage disposal robot is hardwired with anything but a big heart. The devotion that drives Lowe is never more human than when he grieves and cares for the literal object of his affection, Eve, when she becomes deactivated. We might imagine love is human, but Lowe proves that even robots understand that love is patient, kind and selfless. Another examples include Data, who is exploring his inability to feel emotions in Star Trek The Next Generation, Ava, who manipulates human emotion in Ex Machina, and Samantha, the eye software in her, breaking a man's heart after she loves and leaves him. The list goes on and on. The science fiction films and series continuously show us robots experiencing feelings, human feelings. We can unite the movies as stories that influence our perception of robots as well as the ever more advanced and persistent efforts of scientists to create a robot with not only artificial intelligence, but also artificial emotionality. Once robots like Pepper and Sophia have been designed to interpret and respond to human emotions, the time has come to talk about it. Is the idea of having emotional robots becoming more and more real? Despite talk about artificial intelligence and how it is more and more resembles the human brain, there is an area that remains questionable among artificial intelligence scientists, human emotions and memory. The more significant question is whether robots can experience the whole emotionality of human beings and go further to a point where they can live with it, people. And if we already have examples of robots with linguistic and logical intelligence, do we have a robot with AI emotional intelligence? There is belief that human emotions are too complex and cannot be replicated into a robotic mind. I would claim that robots can express and recognize feeling even in a more uncomplicated manner than their creators. At present, cognitive science and robotic technologies are advancing in the creation of a robotic being that performs human activities in full volume and at the same time possesses emotionality and inherent to a man. To inaugurate the basis of the research on emotional robots, I will explain the characteristics of human emotions through investigation of some of the emotion theories then I will examine the technical specification of human rights robots like Pepper, Nao and Sophia and others in the same category designed to interact with humans on an emotional level to find out whether and how they possess emotionality. Through my findings, I assert that although human-like robots lack the subjective aspect of feelings, they can express and recognize people's emotional states. Theories of Human Emotion in humans and animals, what we define as emotional behavior is mainly related to the external manifestations of what they feel. A smile, a hug, a grimace, or tears. When animals recognize the emotion, they observe perpetuation, thunder, attempted assault, and so on. Because the computer has no face and body, it cannot recognize emotions if they are embedded in it. On the other hand, there are already animated programs depicting individuals that allow AI to communicate with mimics not only by voice. And to show their emotions and movements, they must be able to walk in the form of moving humanoids or not robots. According to many scientists, emotion is a subjective experience which goes along with biological and behavioral alterations. Its components include appraisal of events, neuropsychological changes, action tendencies, expressions, and personal feeling theory. Many researchers believe that there are some substantially different emotions which are shared by all human beings 
and which evolved to handle the inherited challenges of people. This theory outlines happiness, surprise, fear, sadness, anger, and disgust as those basic emotions or feelings. This approach has been supported by the facial expressions component, which has been proven to be universal among people from different cultural backgrounds and cognitive abilities. Scientists like Ekman, who support the basic emotion theory, also found out that there is a correlation between facial expressions and emotional states and that those feelings are often automatic. In some, this argument places expressions in neuropsychological changes as the core of human emotionality. On the other hand, there are theorists who reject the idea of discrete emotions and condemn that emotion can be simplified to two states of emotions. According to James Russell, mood and emotions depend on whether a person feels good or bad, energized or enervelated, and these states are what he calls core effects. He adds that these states called core effects influence reflexes, perception, cognition, and behavior, and are influenced by many causes both internal and external, but people have no direct access to these causal connections. Therefore, core effect can be experienced as free-floating mood or can be attributed to some cause. Russell also argues that the primary feelings of anger, fear, happiness cannot capture the diversity of emotions that the human being experiences develops an idea that emotions are forms of thought and judgments based on it. For cognitive theorists, emotions are not merely feelings, but rather responses to a particular intentional object. In other words, if a person is afraid of snakes, strange or heights, then he has an attitude that persuades him to think about these things as being physically or psychologically threatening. According to this theory, those judgments are conscious and not automatic as the previously mentioned hypothesis. Opposed to cognition theories, the feelings theory assumes that emotions are all about feelings. Hence, if one's environment or body state changes, then the subjective perceptions also change. Or as Williams James and Carl Lang imply, the perception of bodily changes as they occur is the emotion. But differently, their theory proposes that firstly occur the psychological changes instead of the mental responses and then the brain acts by the information gathered from one's nervous system. There are many premises on what components comprise emotion, and there is no single definition of it. However, what is standard for all of the theories is that changes in them have a direct relation to one's emotional state of mind. Then there are neuropsychological changes which help a person to react accordingly to the stimuli from his or her environment. To examine the probability of humanoids having emotions, I have discussed several robots and research done on emotional robotics. If we take as an example the now robot, he knows when you're wrong with him and he responds appropriately, with retreat, mistrust, fear. To get him to relax, you have to pat him on the head and smile friendly. What you see on the screen are some of his emotional capabilities. Showing emotion as a physical demonstration is vital. The Japanese robot Neo was designed to interpret specific characters and words from people who communicate with it and to answer logically. Through video cameras he knows how close he is to the person and his sensors show what communications are taking place. If you smile at him or pat him on the head, now knows you're glad and you're gesturing. The robot can show if he's happy, dirty, scary, just like a toddler. Now's creators argue that if people take advantage of the ability to touch emotionally intelligent robots, it will make it easier to accept them after a time when they become a part of our everyday life. From Erdogan's analysis of now postures, it becomes clear that when he is sad, he lifts his shoulders and lowers his head. On the other hand, when he is happy, he raises up his arms and asks for a hug. And when he is scared, he shrinks and stays until he is relieved by gentle stroking. Over time, relationships with people evolve as they behave with him, and he becomes either their friend or enemy. Of course, one of the first questions one would ask is indeed, when a robot shows joy or fear, can we assume that he experiences them? Considering that we perceive emotions through their expression, and there is no other way to understand that the living being felt them, then we must assume that these emotions exist even in robots. Today there are scientists confident that robots with real feelings will be created in the future for up to 50 years. But is the idea about emotional machines good? I guess time will show. 
Another reason for robots possessing emotion, as outlined by some theorists, is that all kinds of organisms need emotional systems to survive, explore, and interact with the environment. Therefore, if robots are created to be a part of our world, they would also require an equivalent system of emotions with which to make decisions and to act with accordance to their surroundings. However, to achieve cognition, one needs to model the interplay of sensory-motor interaction and homeostatic bodily regulation at different levels. In other words, the interplay between the external and internal environment of an organism is essential for the achievement of emotional intelligence of robots. According to Zimke, inserting emotional systems in robotics still needs further development even if we are present with relative evolution in this regard. The merging of reality and fiction can be closer than we think. And if there are reasons for creating emotional robots, it might be good to compare the non-emotional to emotional machine. Because of the second one, we rely on every day and in all situations. And the first one, according to many, will be an improvement in many aspects of its use. Emotional robots can be used in many ways. Imagine the following. If you have Pepper, the softbank robot, you can count on it immediately to find out if you're upset or try to calm you down and tell you a joke. Breton notes that the capacity for processing emotion through a non-conscious affective channel is an important attribute which strengthens the argument for emotionally expressive machines. Emotional robots can serve as consultants in the clothing stores to see if customers feel good by offering them a careful service that ent that's entirely up to their emotional needs. If you're too busy conducting interviews for a position in the company, the emotional robot again can come to the rescue. They would very well capture every mimic in the human answering the questions, discovering if they lie and gaining an obvious idea of his or her skills and characters. Researchers believe that a more engaging and comfortable human-machine interaction should be established so we accept human needs not as our prospective enemies but as our cooperators in life. Along with that, social robots need to be responsible to people and in a manner perceived as appropriate and natural. Finally, according to Breton, dynamic physical behaviors are proven to be useful for the robotic expressiveness of emotions. Pepper is claimed to be the first personal robot in the world to read emotions designed by the Japanese corporation SoftBank. As described by the company, Pepper is equipped with the ability to move his head with 20 degrees of freedom of movement and thus engage in people's conversations. He also has several types of sensors and large capacity battery, but most importantly is his simulated emotions function according to the developers. Pepper can change his emotions according to his surroundings. The humanoid can recognize people he knows and events that are good for him, he expresses excitement by changing his tone of voice or by singing. The machine has a screen attached to his chest that reads color and movement of graphics. All of those specifications show a tremendous advance in the ways robots interact and even if Pepper's emotions are simulated, they are still recognized by human beings as signs of emotionality. Sophia, on the other hand, is the newest invention in humanoid robotics, which is famous for becoming the first robot citizens in 2017 in Saudi Arabia. Her appearance is detailed and sophisticated enough to resemble a real woman, except that the robot lacks hair. Zara Stone, a Forbes contributor, describes Sophia as humorous robot. All of her features are thanks to the built-in AI which tells her when to alter the tone of voice to make eye contact to recognize human faces and understand human speech. Further than that, Sophia can express feelings, but it is still unknown how these emotions correlate to her actions. Despite all of her features, just like Pepper, she still does not have cognition and understanding of her being. Sophia is one of the few robots of its kind so far, and her developer David Hansen hopes in a few years she will evolve even more. One of the major limitations scientists that create humanoid robots face in terms of emotions is that they produce machines which utilize mainly body expressions and not their robotic brains. Rosalind Picard provides an interesting example to show why Microsoft Assistant Clippet needs emotions. She portrays an office atmosphere in which a working man is intruded by a robot. Unfortunately, the robot responds in an adequate manner, which highly annoys the worker who is almost powerless to explain the situation to the robot. 
Picard highlights three problematic areas that need to be fixed so we can have sufficient human-machine interactions. Robot does not detect emotion, does not respond appropriately to emotion, and displays only a headphones which does not correlate with the situation. Even if her example is relatively dated, it shows how rapidly scientists have found ways to implement even some emotions. But the case also shows a concern that is still present today. Robots are created on the basis of the first emotional theory I discussed, being able to recognize only emotions of happiness, anger, sadness, fear, surprise and disgust, while emotions like boredom, tiredness are, and interest are still excluded from their capabilities. For many years, it has been debated whether gestures and body movements are an accurate reflection of one's internal emotional state. The only means of expression a robot has is utilizing physical movements, a problematic aspect of creating a humanoid with full emotional capacity is that the debate, as mentioned above, still exists. First, human beings have to reach the level in which they have a complete understanding of their emotions and then to implement that knowledge in another creature. As we already saw, some of the theories consider facial expressions, body movements, brain activity and internal drives motivations are few of the factors that affect human emotions and probably future humanoids should be developed in a way that utilizes all of these theories altogether. Researchers go further in the analysis of robots which use gestures to convey emotions. The now robot is a humanoid robot which has a face but no facial motors. It adjusts his arms, legs, head and torso to arrange itself in emotionally semantic poses. To understand what is missing for the humanoid robots to function adequately as emotional intelligent beings, we need to explore how current social robots operate. Many robots have superhuman senses, such as distance sensors and laser rangefinders. However, vision and audition are two of their most important features. Onboard microphones and multiple movable cameras help the robot better perceive its environment. The newly developed photorealistic human-like robots possesses human appearances and movements, but still there is insufficient perception, performance of the computer vision, audition and dialogue systems that prevents robots from engaging in truly intuitive multimodal interactions with humans. Video essay, I have argued that robots can have emotional intelligence even if they still do not have subjective feelings. For a of various emotion theories, I show that there is still not one single definition of emotion. And later, I suggested that this is one of the reasons why we don't have robots with total cognitive and emotional capacities. Then I provided two empirical examples which prove that emotion can be expressed from robots and recognized as such by people. However, there are still limitations to the creation of cognitive humanoid who not only expresses and recognizes emotion, but also feels it. Another aspect of robotic emotion that should be addressed is what kind of emotion do these robots possess. The acknowledgement that has to be made is that robots can never have real human emotions as they will never have all of the human characteristics like similar psychology and control structure or otherwise they wouldn't be humanoids but humans. Having that in mind, a robot with emotional capabilities that can socialize and communicate accurately is already created even if it lacks cognition and other human characteristics. Sophia and Pepper are two humanoids who possess the emotions in sense as mentioned above. They both can recognize emotion, act accordingly and interact through their facial, vocal and physical properties. I began this essay by reminding you about some of the sci-fi movies that have been made about AI and human-like robots. But all of this is not just a science fiction. In conclusion, there are robots already discovering almost all facial expressions and recognizing emotions, and their development will inevitably lead not only to the interpretation of feelings, but also to their belief that those feelings are real. Is not that the essence of emotions, the personal sense that we have them and they exist?